I've mentioned it to her, is that she's so supportive to the extent that when I'm out there running an errand or indeed working, it's like we are waiting for it. Hi, um, welcome. This is the Girl Red Rose Ebba Missionary and I'm excited that you're joining us. So remember, this is a very special segment of the BBC called um, Married and Mastering. All right. Um, so good morning in case you're watching us from wherever. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. So today I'm excited because I have one of the most powerful, <laughs> anointed <laughs> couples that I know. But before I go to that, let me just give you um, an intro of what Married and Mastering is all about. So Married and Mastering is pretty much about equipping you with time-tested kingdom nuggets that will help you to, you know, uh, have a fulfilling marriage. Because we know that in this 21st century, a lot of people have wrong ideas about marriage. So we want to uh, prove to you that it's possible to be, you know, to be happily married because married, marriage is a good idea, not just a good idea. So before I go on and on, please allow me to allow my guests to introduce themselves. I wish I had glasses as well. <laughs> Go first. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, my name is Mary Simujaiwombe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'm married to this man here. Um, and I work for Set Apart. Um, aside from that, I also volunteer at my church in the youth ministry. And yeah. What else? <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, my name is Paul Simu <laughs> Jayangombe, and I'm the one of that special name. The <laughs> woman is the S, plus the S, different things. Um, I'm, I serve as the campus director for Rema Zambia, and I also volunteer at uh, Set Apart International as one of the lead mentors. And I also serve in church as an usher. Yeah. <laughs> and for some of you that you know are joining us for the very first time, like people who know me, they think I'm a D. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but I always tell them to say, if you think I'm a D, what? And still you meet the real D. <laughs> because I always get excited. Um, we'll see as the show goes on. Yeah, we'll see as the, anyways, we're not here to talk about the D's and the what. Anyway, so yeah, so thank you so much. Mm. For agreeing, mm. I, I know you are like very busy, you are busy in your job, like you are <laughs> super busy, yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like you, you know, you, I don't know, you, you picked each other well, like both busy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyways, thank you so much, like I don't take it lightly, and I strongly believe that, you know, this interaction that we have is going to change lives, it's going to transform lives. Amen. I'm confident, Amen. and I have faith, and I know that. So yeah, so like I said, uh, maybe we can start to let you sort of relax a little bit. I know you're both public speakers, but you know, <laughs> I just wanted you to sort of just tell me or tell us how you met, just briefly, and what did you like about it? <laughs> how we met? Yeah. Okay, so I don't even know how we, I can tell the story of how we met, mm -hmm. because we grew up in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. and even though we're not friends, well, which neighborhood was that? In Inkana East, okay. Kitwe, right. Copper Belt, mm -hmm. Zambia. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we knew each other, our families knew each other, our dads worked in the mines together, mm. our moms taught at the same primary school for years together, um, our brothers and sisters, everybody just sort of, like we knew each other. You're like family friends, kind of. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 You can. You can. You can say that like tribesmates. Everything is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You may think it's an arranged marriage, but <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. And um, 
like there's a years past anyway mm. around 2013 mm. when i was coming back from from school in china mm -hmm. then he connected with me on facebook um after how many years how long were you yeah. in china after uh, i was in china for five years Ooh. So yeah. then after this, so you saw you popping up. Oh. <laughs> and that's, it was purely, it was, it was purely, it was Spiritual. actually ministry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was actually ministry. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how my friend, a friend of mine who was actually my chief bridesmaid, mm -hmm. he told me mm -hmm. later on that she was the one who told him mm -hmm. to reach out to me. Yeah. And he did. And I'm just like, uh, okay, scripture, you know, he's sending me scriptures and things like that. But... One thing led to another in that he played a very big role in my becoming born again. Wow. And uh, in my wow. coming to set apart. <laughs> and <coughs> yeah, in, in every, like, if, if there was ever, you know, an accreditation to a human wow. being about your spiritual journey, I would wow. give credit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's like God, God, God used him. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll get yeah, to that. God used him. Yeah. So that's it's wow. it's part of our journey. Mm. But yeah, basically that's how we met. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and be oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Like before we I want to switch, I want sure. to finish. So what did you like about him? When I started to like him? Yes, finally when, when I started yes, to like yes, him. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think the 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 fact that he was a godly man okay. and I could like literally see yeah. him live out mm -hmm. uh, the Christian, you know, Christian, Christianity, Christian beliefs. Mm. Um, and also, yeah, like, ish, I think that would have been like my main thing because the person he was then and the person he is now has slightly changed. So yeah, that's the story for another day. So but, might be maybe. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but that was the main that was the main thing. Great. Yeah, that was my main great. Mm. And you, sir. <laughs> How so, did you mean <laughs> the, the thing is even like, like so so that I'm clear, clear, so that people don't have this picture that these Christian guys they are preaching the gospel so that they can make her become a girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there was no intention to that. It yeah. was purely <clears throat> purely out of love mm -hmm. for a sister or a soul mm -hmm. that I believed needed God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was it. Even when I was taking her, after I took her on, she got saved. Uh, through mm. Bishop Joy Makando in Chipata as he was preaching. Wow. Yes, she got saved, she came back, we wow. started talking. Even when I sent her to set apart, mm. it was... You actually sent her to set apart? Yes, wow. yeah. I recommended her to go wow. to set apart. Yeah. It was purely because I got to a place where I felt there were things I could never give her as wow. a man in mentoring her. Wow. Yeah, so By then, were you already in a relationship? Or no, you just, I you was, just a sister? I was in a relationship. Was, all right. She was a sister. So you just wanted to help a sister? Yes, a sister. Wow. yes purely for, uh, out of love. Mm -hmm. You know, where you've seen that okay, this person has got issues they're struggling mm -hmm. with. And... I believe that there's a place where if they go, mm -hmm. they will receive the help they need. Wow. So I sent her genuinely uh, out of that. And we worked together. Mm -hmm. There was a ministry I was running called Born and Destined to Reign. Mm -hmm. So we'd meet in Lusaka mm -hmm. and then we'd meet in Kito. Mm -hmm. Then she was acting as, she was working as my PA. Mm -hmm. So she would book meetings for me uh, <laughs> because I would forget appointments. It's a love story. <laughs> Yeah, so she was your PA. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. So she was very helpful. No, she is. Yes, she was like putting, like I, I think she was putting lots of stuff in order for me, you know, where I would mix up meetings because I would have meet, I was a student at the university, mm. Cavendish. Then I was running the fellowship. Mm. I had people to meet, I had people to see. Wow. So most of the time, I found myself in a place where I would have so many things to do, but I couldn't do them together. Mm. So she was helping me with coordinating activities. So for example, if we're having, uh, let's say, a fellowship meeting in Kitu, mm. I was not the one who there was. People were not sending the money to me. They were wow. sending the money to her. People were not registering to travel with us. If you're traveling to Kitwe with me, they were registering with her. Even the arrangement of the whole entire meeting, mm. wherever it's happening, she was the one who was doing it. I was never involved. The only thing I would do is come and preach, do the counseling, do the mentorship, do whatever ministerial work that I need to do. Then I would also say that uh, I was in a relationship. Mm -hmm. 
and the person I was dating used to sing. So mm -hmm. mostly, not all the time, mm -hmm. mostly they would come for meetings and they would be the ones that would help to, to do the singing. Mm -hmm. So I had no yeah. interest in her, like zero interest. Okay. That's because for me, I was just seen her as one of the sisters. Dedicated. Like yes. So. yes. No, I understand. And I was yeah. a big brother to her. No, I hear yeah. you. So mm -hmm. now you asked how did I meet her. So what happened was mm -hmm. um, <laughs> after I broke up with the girl I was dating then. She was not involved at all. No. no. Zero. <laughs> Zero. I know she was accused because people found oh, yes. out later. Yes. Because yes. we were one and together. Yes, okay. but zero. Mm -hmm. Zero. No, nothing. It, yeah. it didn't have anything to do mm -hmm. with her. It was between me and the girl. We mm -hmm. had uh, issues that were unresolved mm -hmm. and they just couldn't be resolved. Yeah. Like we reached a point where we couldn't resolve mm -hmm. the issues. Yeah, we had dated for like three to four years, mm -hmm. but our issues were never being resolved. And we had the same issue over yes. and over. Yeah. So with her, what happened was, it was true. We were just chatting on WhatsApp consistently. Mm -hmm. Then one day, mm -hmm. as I was looking through Facebook, mm -hmm. I saw one of her pictures <laughs> from China. There is this picture where she did herself, and I think she did yes, this. Yes, I pose. love it. So I think I've seen it before. Like yes. you watch Chinese stuff. Yes, and then she did this. I was, I was like, this girl is pretty. <laughs> But then I, I because I was a man. Of yeah. <laughs> so, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. So, so, but then like you had broken off from that relationship. Yes, it was okay. over. I had even prayed with the person. I actually went and asked it. them. Mm -hmm. We prayed for a release. Wait. I release you, release Wait. me. Yeah, yeah, well done. It was properly done. Yeah. So, 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 it's mm -hmm. that photo. So, like before that, you had scales in your eyes. Yes, right? I was not seeing it. Until yes. it happened to place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then we saw that photo, like the smile. The photo. Then she went and, because she used to move around like the way she's moving. Head, yeah. hair cut. Sneakers, jeans. Mm. So me, I didn't like that sneaker and because jeans. Because I'm man. Because yes. <laughs> yeah. Then one day she plated. <laughs> <laughs> so it was that that just I was just like wow. <laughs> you saw someone completely different, totally home. different. Yeah. yeah. And wow. from then on, I think I began to slowly declare my my interest. She traveled to Kitwe. She was trying to resolve plot issues. Mm. So during the issue of resolving plot issues, mm. it was. Yes, you are trying to help mm -hmm. as the man of God yeah. has always and been the big helping brother. and the big brother. But now this time around, you are even beginning to get jealous now. <laughs> you know where like you feel like these people are not treating this person right. So that right. is not, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's how we great. started. So I started well. falling in love. Great, wow, yeah. beautiful story. <laughs> I'm encouraged. Like you know, I'm learning a lot as well. Yeah. So um, you talked about how you know start with you talked about how he's the one that sort of helped you to grow you know, in um, the things of God, in your know, relationship with God and so on. So, uh, Mr. Paul, mm. so does it mean that you were born like, born Christian. again, like, <laughs> like, you know, because in case I'm watching, I want to know, in case, you know, there are those people that, you know, they had pastor parents, then they grow up yeah. with suits and they start to minister, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. so what's the story? <laughs> so, truth is, I grew up in a home mm -hmm. that is, Christian center. My oh, family right. is SDS. So, um, truth. Uh, the, here is another thing that I, I think I'm, I don't know if I've said this, but uh, some people may know this. When I grew up in the church, I actually used to do a lot of poems, and I was known for poems in church when I was a, a young boy. My husband did this. <laughs> so we have a poet right here. <laughs> yeah, I used to do poems, and I think I remember one of the very, the, the one of the biggest platforms I was given to do was when there was a crusade for some big pastor that came from I think Rusaka or outside mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. I can't remember and it was at um, uh, what's that place in I mm -hmm. have forgotten the name of the park mm -hmm. and I did a poem there and there was a big there was a massive uh, audience. audience yeah and I did a poem there I do remember those and I lost my way uh, of out of God when I was in grade 8 how old you were a teenager by then? Yes, I was very young, I okay. think. Teenage? Yeah, very young in grade 8. Mm -hmm. So I started smoking. What uh, happened? Sorry if you don't share. Like, what happened? Like, is okay, it so pressure? It was yes, yes and no. But, you know, I grew up in, a, in, a, in an environment where Nkana East was one of the mm -hmm. top uh, neighborhoods, mm -hmm. communities and neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you know. 
and you're surrounded with friends who go to private schools, yes. surrounded with friends who go to PlayStations, yes. Yes. Their, their parents have got vehicles, mm. they've got they've got the DVDs and the VCDs mm. of those days. So if you don't know those ones just so that they Yeah, police stations. And so I didn't have all those things mm -hmm. and coming from a home where you don't have everything and you kind of feel like you don't have a sense of belonging mm -hmm. within the community. Yes. You don't have anything that is of value mm -hmm. that you can say, at least I have something that I can be recognized by. Mm -hmm. You know, my friends were recognized by vehicles, they were recognized yes. by bicycles they had, the type of clothes they wore. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have all those things. And so the only thing I began to engage myself in, which I felt was giving me a sense of significance, mm -hmm. That was giving me a sense of identity and belonging to a clique where I also had something mm -hmm. to, offer, to offer was for me to be engaged in smoking mm -hmm. marijuana and drinking shake shake it because then I would also have my own marijuana <laughs> which people will come to me mm -hmm. because now I have something to offer need. yes know? something mm -hmm. to offer you know so that was for me the basis of how I began to shift because I felt insignificant mm -hmm. but that was kind of giving me significance mm -hmm. yeah and so I grew in the smoking, grew in the drinking, mm -hmm. and because when I was young, way, way young, I was molested, mm -hmm. you see, as a child. So mm -hmm. because of that, again, I got exposed to mm -hmm. sex at, at a very young age. age yeah. yeah. So it's something that I already knew, mm -hmm. but now as I was growing, the smoking and the drinking, I was not really exploring. Mm -hmm. But now, obviously, you've grown, you're smoking, and now the next thing is every other yes. friend in the circle has, has a girlfriend. girlfriend. And mm -hmm. what they talk about with having a girlfriend is either they had sex with yes. the girlfriend, they kissed the girlfriend. Yes. So you don't want to be the old one yes. out. Yeah, so I think that now began to influence uh, my decisions. Mm -hmm. And so I started now engaging. I didn't really engage sexually mm -hmm. until when I was in grade 10. That's All when right. I started engaging mm -hmm. uh, sexually with different uh, uh, girls, you know, because it was the cool thing to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, by the time I was reaching uh, grade 10, I had a nickname, uh, people started calling me SJ, so SJ, SJ yeah, okay. so SJ was for shortcut Slim Ja, oh. so Slim Ja was this slim guy that used to blunt a lot, as you used to say, then smoke a lot, so they used to call me SJ, so it was SJ 2002, SJ 2003, SJ 2004, wow. it was actually SJ 2011 when I got born again, so by now it's actually SJ 2020. <laughs> Wow! That was because in each year there was a highlight that I would just have. And there was this friend who was, his name is Mtare, who was keen at paying me particular attention. You set your events around so that you can take the most happening event. Wow! Yeah, and then you would attach them to that. So, um, I, and I, I completely drifted from the church. I knew about God. But were you still going to church or you stopped? Like I stopped. Okay. So, I would only go to church because either I need something from my father huh. or money or something, that's when I would go to church. Or when I'm in serious trouble, I knew that, okay, if I go to church and pray, God will forgive me. Wow. I actually used to sleep with the Bible in my head, <laughs> believing that I'll be protected from witches, especially those pressings that we used to have where people come and try and do Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So yeah, that, and, um, and also back then I used to have a girlfriend who used to go to a church called Lighthouse Christian mm -hmm. Church. Yeah. And she was very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I was in a relationship with her for quite some time. She was very influential towards even finally when I got born again. Mm -hmm. Because wow. the church I used to go to is the church which she was going to. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to church, not because I wanted to go to church, but because I had this girlfriend who used to tell me, if you're not going to church, there's no relationship between And you me. loved her? Because I loved her, yes. And you were able to put, her, put off everything? But For six months point, I did it, <laughs> but I got tired. Did you, did you stop smoking? No, just drinking because that she could see. Smoking she couldn't know. So because I was, and the smoking, the thing is I was not smoking, I stopped smoking cigarettes. Okay. But there was, there's these gums, they've got, they are, they are like, they've got um, nicotine gum. They are okay. got nicotine gums, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they give you that same sensation that All right. smoking, yeah. So, so someone who didn't know? No, when I'm going to see her, I would use that. So the hardest part was stopping to smoke. Mm -hmm. But the drinking, because I knew she would know. So for six months. <laughs> so I'd go to church. But you had one girlfriend? That's time, yes, just one. Wow, she yeah. played the key role. Right? <laughs> yes, just one. And I actually started seeing the sense of being a Christian. Wow. But I, and I, but I was not born again. Okay. I was not. 
And I read the Bible but didn't understand a thing because she used to make me read the Bible. So I would go to a place called Ravens and we'll sit there only to read the Bible. And I would listen, but my listening was always centered towards the fact that one day she will accept that I was wow. with her. It was never the fact that I want Genuine. to be born again. Mm. Yes. I, I did kind of I did kind of like the Bible reading and all, but truth is I was understanding nothing. Mm. I was not born again. Mm. I, had, I had I was full of the devil. You know, so I was understanding nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so as time went by, I left her. You left her? Yeah, because I went back to my drinking. No, so, she left me, no, sorry. She, she left, left me. Yeah, I went back to my drinking. And how did you feel about that? Well, I had a choice. Mm. I mean, she didn't want a guy. I wanted to be real. That's mm. the thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to accept me for the drunk I was. And the smoke kind of When you say you used to drink or you were a drunk? Because I, I was a drunk. I, didn't used to, I never used to drink. I was a drunk. Okay. Yes. When you say a drunk, what do you mean? Oh, I drank <laughs> anything and anything. <laughs> anything that would get me high, I drank. Lutuku, Askatrasu, Shekseki, Chukuku. I so, drank all yeah. that. Okay, yeah. so she left you? She left me and after she left me, then I found another girl who now I started dating. And now, that time I found a perfect match. When I say perfect match, I was, I, was a, I, was, I was a drunk. She was a, okay, not really a drunk, but she used to drink. So I used to drink every day. She used to drink every weekend. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I think for me that was the, it was the most uh, dangerous phase of my life. Wow. Very dangerous. And why I say it was very dangerous was because this relationship was a great relationship. But at the same time, it was very highly toxic. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was sex in the relationship, mm -hmm. there was abortions in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And it was at the time when now I had also begun to just multitask women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Huh? Mm -hmm. Like not having one girlfriend. Okay. Three, four, you know. Like two, just girlfriend three. or girlfriend to sleep with? Sleep with, not mm -hmm. just. But the, did they know they had other women or...? No, because there was this, the main woman. These were side women. So they knew that there was a main woman, but the main woman didn't know? Yes. Okay. She, she, she didn't. Okay. But, they, but you loved they, her? Yes. Well, look, it was... As much as a... A drunk, drunk I was. <laughs> so I loved her. The truth is, yes, I did love her. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm going to say. I think I do believe that even non-believers mm -hmm. can genuinely love. Mm -hmm. They can genuinely love with mm -hmm. this love of husband and a wife, mm. they get married, mm. they, they can laugh mm. and they obviously not only do fall in love but they can sustain mm. love. You see that? Uh, but the difference with me was uh, the perspective from which I was loving mm. lacked what we call the agape love of God, mm. which is the unconditional yes, love of God, yes, which yes. is not based yes. on what the person does. Mm. So for me, even my cheating, mm. it was always because I felt as though there's something wrong that my partner did to me, which uh, justified my cheating. All right. Yeah. All so right. maybe it could be that she's refused to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. So because maybe she's refused to have sex with me for three days. Mm -hmm. So that now begins to make me think, mm -hmm. so I can't just have one. Yes. So that in the day she's refused, yes. I can go to another yes. one. And that was also a common trend yes. in the circles that I was hanging around yes. in. I think um, now I think it is. Yeah, it was a yeah. common trend mm -hmm. to say you can't survive with only one mm -hmm. woman. You know, you need one or two mm -hmm. because in case this yes. one at the point they are not available yes. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that now became the norm mm -hmm. for for me uh, to just live like that. Mm -hmm. And I think I lived like that for a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you talked about the SJ twenty eleven. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So. So what happened in twenty eleven? What happened to the, the SJ? The home of SJ. Yeah. <laughs> we still continue with SJ. Yeah. So, uh, what happened was in twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. Um, I I had at that time I think I was dating three girls, mm -hmm. and yes, there was this girl I was dating. The main one. The same the girl. The main one. Yes. Okay. And at the back of my mind, sometimes I used to think I would. Want to get married? Mm -hmm. yeah, to we'll the same get girl. married. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll get married. Mm -hmm. The thoughts were there. Mm -hmm. Get married one day. But then, uh, in 2011, I attended an overnight mm -hmm. in Karulushi. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Simpungo was preaching on dominion from mm -hmm. Genesis 126, mm -hmm. and he was just talking about how that 
um, in 2012, God was going to give people dominion mm -hmm. over money, wow. dominion over things, dominion mm -hmm. over what. And I used to run a business called mm -hmm. Scarps Limited. Mm -hmm. So I used to be supplying, I used to sell computers. So I'd get computers that time, 2011, Lusaka was like South Africa. So we import from Lusaka. <laughs> and this resale. Mm -hmm. Resale in, in Lusaka, yeah. So during that period of time, I attended an overnight on Christmas. First on Christmas, I don't even know what he was preaching on. I attended but learned nothing. But on New Year's Eve, why this he was preaching? When he finished preaching, mm. he called for an altar call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to say if you really are at a place where you want God to bring dominion mm -hmm. over your life. I was at a place where I was broken. Like mm. I just got tired. Got tired of smoking, got tired of drinking, got tired of just being the black sheep of the mm -hmm. family. I got tired of being a nuisance. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just got tired of that mm -hmm. life. There but was you didn't know what to do? No, I didn't know. You know, I would, wow. truth is way before I even tried to fast. Mm -hmm. But I wanted, I, before getting mm -hmm. born again, I remember I fasted. And around 16 hours, I had this friend of mine who called me and he said, Hey, why fresh coco? He said, My friend, it's happening this side, there's beer. I forgot my fasting. When, and, and like I was committed thinking that after this fast, these chains will break. So, you know, so I had been trying. Yeah. yeah. But it never In your worked. power. In my own power. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you felt. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that day, mm -hmm. when the pastor preached and he called for an altar call, I was with a friend of mine. He uh, may he saw the rest in peace. His name is Agai, Agai Pika. Mm -hmm. He's only just pushed me and says, because he saw that I wanted to go, but I was but just dead. Yeah. But I was ashamed. How am I going to go to the front? Mm -hmm. You know, and stuff. And that's how he poked me and just said, no, just go. Mm -hmm. That's how I went to the wow. front. Raised my hands, got born again. That was at midnight. Wow. Then, because they were giving communion, they said, You will not eat communion until you get born again mm -hmm. and stuff. So, I really wanted that communion and how he had explained the power of the communion. So, I really wanted wow. that communion and the dominion it comes with. Mm -hmm. So, they took us to a separate room and all of a sudden I just started crying wow. in the room. And you didn't know why? No, I didn't know. So, I'm thinking, Why am I crying? Mm -hmm. And it's embarrassing there. Women here and this guy yes. is crying. <laughs> but you couldn't hold yourself. Yes, I couldn't. I, I just felt this sense of love that I had never, I had never felt before. Mm. And after that, uh, I went home. And as we were going home with a friend, we were arguing about the church to go to now mm. because I had been to Lighthouse mm. before. So the only church I trusted mm -hmm. as a person who's just been born again mm. was Lighthouse. Mm. So my friend was saying, you know, we can go to any Pentecostal mm -hmm. church. So as we were going, there was a church called KCC, Kito Central, something. It's in Kito, I've forgotten the church, but in Parkland. In we are in Tanj, Parkland, we are in Tanj, Jumbo Drive. And as we were going there, my friend was arguing about me going to the other church. Mm -hmm. And I had this nice shoot, suit that I wore on my sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. So it's a suit I wanted to wear to church for the mm -hmm. first time. Now I'm born again. Wow. So we were arguing, I was, I was just, I was putting on a green golf t-shirt, a polo, I remember, the blue jeans and black sneakers mm. and Nike sneakers and I just wanted to go mm. to that lighthouse church. He was telling me, you can go to church in the same clothes. Mm. So I refused. Mm. I said, I can't go. I've been raised to go to church smart. Yeah. So as we were arguing, I told him, you know what, let's forget this, let's forget this, uh, this church thing. You know, let's just go and buy shake, shake it, buy cigarettes, buy vegetables, we go and go.